Hi everyone, nice to see you again. For those of you watching these videos for the very first time, my name is Julian Greggio, I'm a radiographer with a strong passion for MRI and today I would like to discuss with you tips and tricks related to isotropic voxels in MRI. So in particular today we will analyze the results obtained by using different types of voxels in neuro MRI examinations to understand their impact on our final image quality. But let's try first to clarify what is a voxel in MR imaging and when we call it isotropic. As we all probably know, there is a thing in MRI which is called image resolution that can be defined as the amount of detail that we can see on our image. At the same time, the detail is the ability to distinguish different anatomical structures very close to each other. Now, when we talk about image resolution in MRI, there is a major thing to take into consideration, the matrix. The matrix consists of a grid of tiny little squares called pixels or cubes of data called voxel. Now, what's the major difference between a pixel and a voxel? So, the size of a pixel is determined using this parameter, so the field of view, or also called F of E, the base resolution values which can sometimes be seen as a frequency values and the phase resolution values, which are all displayed here in this page. So the calculation is made by taking the field of view, so the F of E, and dividing it by the phase and the fa uh, by the base and the phase resolution values. So in this example, we need to divide 250, namely the value of the F of E, per 256, which corresponds to both the base and the phase resolution. Bear in mind that differently from other MR vendors, for Siemens scanners, this last value is expressed in percentage, as we can see here. The result from this calculation is a pixel with a matrix of 1 mm per 1 mm. In order now to turn this pixel into a cube, so transform it into a voxel, we need to add an additional dimension which corresponds to the slice thickness. If you look now at the top right hand corner, there is a little cube display there, and close to it we have the following values. 1 mm per 1 mm, which as we said is the size of our pixel, plus a third dimension of 1 mm, which consists of the size of our slice thickness. So under these conditions, we will be able to acquire a data set of images with a voxel that can be considered perfectly isotropic as it has three equal dimensions. And what is the major benefit of doing so? First and foremost, working with isotropic voxels will allow us to get high resolution multiplanar reconstructions in 3D imaging. There are plenty of healthcare facilities which have already replaced those time consuming 2D sequences acquired in the three standard planes with just a single acquisition of a 3D sequence acquired with an isotropic voxel and then post-processed and reconstructed in the two remaining planes. In this example, for instance, we have a T2 space acquired originally in the sagittal plane which can then be post-processed and reconstructed in the coronal and axial plane preserving quite a satisfying amount of spatial resolution, as we can see here. However, a 3D sequence with a perfect isotropic voxel can be pretty time-consuming in terms of acquisition time. Therefore, some parameters might be varied a little bit to try to address this kind of problem. A common approach consists of doing some mild changes on the size of one of the dimensions of the voxel. Let's try, for instance, to move the slice thickness from a size of 1 mm to 1.5. This not only will increase the signal-to-noise ratio, since more protons will contribute to our final image, but also it will provide us with an extended anatomical coverage, which will consequently allow us to potentially decrease the number of slices and therefore, obviously, the scan time. This, nevertheless, comes at the expense of the image resolution, which might be exactly not as the same one expected. 
We are seeing now our first perfect isotropic D2 space with a voxel characterized by equal dimensions, so a sequence perfectly isotropic. We are going now to comparing with new sequence just acquired, switching the slice thickness to 1.5 mm instead of just 1 mm, but keeping the same exact pixel matrix. So it seems to me from this comparison that with such minor parameter variation, the image quality and the resolution is still more than acceptable with no massive uh, compromise on the level of details obtained. However, I'm looking forward to receive your feedback on this. What we need to make sure we double check now is the effective contribution of the spatial resolution on our MPRs, since the more we move away from a perfect isotropic condition, the more we will encounter the possibility of deteriorating the quality of our multiplanar reconstructions. So, as far as I am concerned in this specific case, despite some minor differences with the overall quality perceived, I would say that the resolution can have, that we can have on these MPRs generated from the 1.5 mm slice thickness native acquisition, I would say is almost comparable to the one just seen before. Bear in mind though that the radiologist might have a different opinion, so if you rely on uh, MPRs to replace other 2D sequence, you need to make sure you have a, a high level of details, so very good quality MPRs. The more you get closer to an isotropic condition and the better the results will be. Alternatively, rather than changing the size of the slice thickness, we can act directly on other parameters responsible for alterating the size of the pixel, so FOV, base resolution and phase resolution. So increasing the FOV will have the benefit of increasing the SNR, but the direct consequence of making our pixel larger with less resoluted images. By reducing the base value instead, as we are seeing at the moment, we will decrease the number of lines in the frequency encoding direction of our image. And similarly, reducing the phase value will decrease the number of lines in the phase encoding direction. So overall, these changes will play on our side as far as reducing the image acquisition is concerned. However, they might have quite a lot of detrimental effect on the image resolution. Let's compare now the new voxel with 1.6 per 1.6 millimeter matrix with the one perfectly isotropic. So we're seeing here again our isotropic D2 space with equal dimensions in the voxel which as we said can be used for high quality multiplanar reconstructions. Let's see if we can spot any differences in the image quality with the changes we have just applied. So I would probably say just for, just for now that the differences are much more evident now compared to the acquisition characterized by a larger slice thickness. I can see that there is quite a significant reduction in the level of detail resulting from this last acquisition. Let's evaluate the impact of the MPRs. So having increased our FOV, we have reduced the amplitude of strength of the frequency encoding gradient. This along with the reduction of the, in the frequency and phase resolution values, reflects the deterioration in the image resolution perceived. This can also be visualized in the MPRs, as we can see here, which are not as resoluted as those potentially obtained from a perfect isotropic 3D sequence. Do not get me wrong, the image quality, I would say, is still acceptable. However, we might lose some anatomical detail, which can be crucial, for instance, for the detection of small lesions in the brain parenchyma. And last comparison for the day, let's try to spot the differences between the two alterated sequences. The one we are seeing at the moment is the 3D T2 space acquired alterating uh, the slice thickness to 1.5 mm. But the one we are seeing now is the one with the alteration of the pixel size to 1.6 mm per 1.6 mm. And here we go, we can see that the image quality degradation is, in my opinion, more evident when the alteration on the pixel size is made, rather than acting directly on the slice thickness. 
However, this obviously depends on the nature of the alteration. If we switch from 1 mm to 3 mm, that obviously will have a much more significant impact on the quality of the, um, of the MPRs that we are going to obtain and on the final image resolution. Having said that, I hope you really enjoyed this brief discussion around isotropic voxels. Obviously, your feedback is extremely important because I share quite a lot of personal opinions in this video, but it would be interesting to see what you think about the differences in the image quality and in the spatial resolution obtained from the different multiplanar reconstructions. If you like this kind of videos involving MRI and different topics related to the MRI, just sub subscribe to the channel and new videos will be provided in the near future which I hope will be beneficial to you and your background as an MRI radiographer. I'll see you next time!